Chief Dr. Brian Kinsler from the Ross Flagstaff show today a banded hip flexion mobilization. This can be great if you're getting pinching or pain in the bottom of your squat. Um, I'm going to show it and then I'll talk about a few times when we might want to use this uh, for an athlete or in a course of rehab. So I got a, a, an anchor there in my door and a big heavy band in the gym. You can also put this on a squat rack or just something that won't move. At home we love these door anchors. I'm going to get this band as low to the hip crease as I can and then I'm going to scoop back, get some pretty dang good tension on here. Um, what this is going to do is just distract my hip downward and then I'm going to just support my leg and I'm just going to relax here. So this is going to give my hip a nice big pull down that way. So I'm just going to hang out here uh, for maybe a minute or two, do some ni nice deep breathing. Um, I want to just try to relax so this band can actually pull on the joint itself. If I'm tensed or bracing or just having my leg hang here, then I'm fighting the band the whole time. That kind of defeats the point. So what this does is that the, the arthrokinematics or how the gym, hip joint is oriented is that as our leg comes up into flexion, uh, the head of the femur should drop at least a little bit downwards. At least that's a theory anyway of how it moves inside the joint. And if the hip capsule is, is tight or the joint is not gliding the way it should, we can get some hip pain or tension as we come into flexion. Um, so commonly, this is people who are a little bit stiff and they feel like they need to stretch their hip flexors at the bottom of their squat or when they're squatting down. Uh, so I'm just gonna hang out here. I'm gonna keep talking about this as I just get this hip mode. Um, the, the time when we don't wanna use this is if you're a hypermobile athlete or if your hips have a little laxity. So the same symptom, tightness in the hips at the bottom of the squat, can be caused by hip hypomobility or hip stiffness. That's when we want to use this. Or it can be caused by poor motor control of the hip or a tendon issue around the hip or, or a couple other things going on in the hip joint. Um, but we want to test your hip motion before we just throw this at you because if you already have a lot of motion and what you really need is strength and control, this could make your problem worse. Uh, so we do want to be careful with this. After I hang out here for a couple minutes, then I'm just gonna get some motion up and down like that. I'm using my arms for this, just so I can stay passive and not fighting the band. And then I can finally just do a couple reps of active motion against the band. Again, in a pain-free motion. If any of this is painful, just go as far as you comfortably can. And then we're gonna finish. When I'm done, I'm gonna stand up and do some active air squats up and down because I wanna actively now move through this range of motion. So it should feel different than when you started, maybe a little less pinching. Um, so that's a hip flexion mobilization on your back. There's another version that we can do on hands and knees with the band pulling here. We got a YouTube video for that. Both are good, they both accomplish a similar thing. Just depends where you feel more comfortable and where you get more of an effect. Um, again, we wanna use this for, for athletes who have some, some stiffness or some hypomobility of the hip joint. Um, so a quick self-test that you can do to see that is you can kinda of, uh, kneel in here. How far can you rotate your hip out? And how far can you rotate it the other way? We're laying on your back. Can you get some pretty good rotation? I have, I would say, average to slightly stiff hip mobility. So we want to get probably 35 to 45 degrees. If you have that and more, this might not be the technique for you. Um, so that's the hip flexion mobilization. Give it a shot and uh, let me know how it goes.